A really interesting question within astrophysics, and more particularly within cosmology, is something called Olber's paradox. Now, uh, this involves the question of, you know, why should the night sky be bright? I mean, clearly we know that when we look up at night, the sky isn't bright. I mean, the sky is dark. But uh, Olbers was uh, not the first person to wonder this, but he's the one who sort of made it famous, at least. But it was actually posited a few hundred years before Olbers did. But anyway, we're going to look at it through sort of calling it Olbers' paradox. And so we're going to look at, first of all, um, what Newton's assumptions were, in other words, what the thinking at the time was, and then we'll go over um, why it is that it's a paradox, what the paradox actually is, and then, of course, why it is that Olbers you know, thought it was a paradox, and then we'll even talk about some of the solutions for it, which bring up a lot of interesting key points within cosmology. So I think it's a really good place to start with cosmology, is by talking about this. So first of all, at the time, Newton thought, uh, well, I mean, the thinking at the time was the following, that the universe, maybe we'll do this, so Newton's assumption, the universe is the following three things here. So they thought that the universe was infinite. In other words, there's no edge, there's no end to the universe. Uh, number two, they thought at the time that the universe was static. In other words, the universe should be sort of unchanging in time. And three, they thought that the universe should be uniform. What I mean by that is, uh, you know, it should be the same in most places. In other words, the distance between the stars should be the same, and all stars should have the same luminosity. So those were Newton's main three assumptions. Now, uh, maybe let's talk about what the paradox is. So he was saying, well, if there's an infinite number of stars, then an infinite number of stars should mean that the night sky should be bright. This was sort of his paradox. This is what he sort of said. Now, clearly that is not the case, so there must be something wrong with our assumptions. But I think it's an interesting question to look at. So we're going to go through this as if this is the case. We're going to see what the problem is, and then we're going to try to find solutions for it. So first of all, why should this, I mean, what does this actually mean? What we mean is that if you're a little person right here standing on the earth, maybe I'll just draw the earth here. So uh, let's say this right here, this is the earth. Here you are, you're standing here. There's the person. Now you're standing there and you're looking up at the sky. Now in the sky, of course, you're going to see lots and lots of stars. Right? And the stars are all over the place. If it's an infinite universe, then of course there should be an infinite number of stars. But let's just say, okay, you're looking up at the sky. What this means is that no matter where you look, so if you're looking out this way, oh, you see a star. Over here you see a star. Over here you see a star. No matter what your line of sight is, you should end up running into a star. No matter how far back you look, there should be a star. And so his idea was this, that if there was an infinite number of stars, and he was able to figure out that, uh, according to this, even if a star is really far behind, there should be some light that's reaching you. And, you know, the net result of all of those means that the sky should be bright. I mean, clearly we know this is wrong, but at least this is, this is what he sort of realized, that, well, these assumptions mean that this would be the case, that the sky should be bright. That's why it's a paradox, because we know it's not true.